Um, this is a Louis the 16th chair from 1920s that I found for $9.99. They are a hand carved 1920s French chair. And uh, I wish I'd gotten, they had more than one, I wish I'd gotten the other ones, but it's called the hot air balloon Louis. It's called, how do you say it, Jasmine? You speak French. Monte Golfier. I Mont have to cover the arms and the seat. That, that doesn't come off so easily. So this one's gonna be a little more difficult. And I didn't want to paint it or do anything to it, but my daughter didn't like the color of the ballooning being the green tones and the rose tones in there. So she's gonna have me repaint this original color chair. So I made sure it's what she wanted. So we're gonna take the fabric off this and we're gonna paint this as well. But wow, get a load of this table with the cherry finish on that top. And that white linen leg with the chalk paint looks really, really good. This is the Matte Clear Rust-Oleum for chalked paint. Show that to you up close. I want to shake this because you don't want any air bubbles in it. If you're going to stir it, stir it with a stir stick. Right, you can put this on with a brush, a finished brush, or you can put this on with just inexpensive poly brushes. All right, and you can put on one coat to three coats. Uh, on a chair, you can put on one coat to three coats. On a chair like this, I suggest at least two. We're going to start from the top and work our way down because of drips. You put it on thick, that's fine. This ensures that that chalking doesn't come back on your clothes. It protects protects that finish and the raw wood there where you sand it from aging and And then we'll go back to the back side to make sure there's no drips on the back side of any detailed work like this. right here where the hands rub here a lot.
called the air balloon chair. You can see the air balloon here on the back. It's worth uh, probably about $1,500 to $2,000. And my daughter had me paint over the paint. She said she didn't care what it was worth. She wanted what she wanted. And I believe now that I'm refurbishing it, I'd be more likely buy it to buy it for that kind of money than I would what it looked like before. Sometimes you got to refurbish things. I'm gonna look it over. Uh, I'm gonna look it over really well for any drips. And there you have it. Okay, now I'm done. I'm gonna let that dry overnight, and then tomorrow I'll put on the fabric. And there's her. Uh, there's her fabric. The detailed work on the scrolls on the arms that we've sanded down and gave a nice shabby chic look to. Basket on the balloon. And we let some of these original pink and green collars from the original chair come back through. It's got a nice curved front and some beautiful and some beautiful floral work and scroll work here on the legs as well. Even the legs in the back are are beautiful and this nice piano shaped chair is just gorgeous and here's her fabric up close all right all right so when I start to put on the seating we'll be right back I gotta let this dry a few hours first okay I had to use double the fabric here and I just cut it off at an angle like this after I centered it. So I centered my pattern and got it the way that I wanted it on the chair. So you can see I have a reef here, a reef here, and the main design here. And this gives me two designs out here where the chair flares out really nicely. So you set this on here. Now my daughter's fabric was a thinner cotton, so I doubled it. So um, so that way this debris and whatever, and it won't wear through. It'll, it won't show this fabric and design underneath here through such a thin fabric. Uh, trust me, I normally work with a upholstery fabric. I'm, so now I've taken this here and I set it where I wanted it, pulled it down a little bit, and I pinned it right here between the wood and the fabric line right here, just as they did. All right. Then you come around here to the back side, pull it tight, you get your center line here where you want it, centered with the chair, pull it tight, and then I put two staples in right here. Now remember, this is going to get some trim, so it will cover that up. Now we're going to do the same thing to the sides of the chair. But here, you can see we have the arm here, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and make our cut. We know that we're centered where we want to be, just like that. If you want, you can go ahead and put in one staple here on the side. And I'm just using uh, 3 eighths of an inch uh, staples in my staple gun. And you can do that on this other side as well. So that way when she sits up and down, this doesn't leave a crease. There we go. And we'll be putting more nails here in, in just a minute. Now we got to come around the arm post here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut straight down. I have to give it a little bit of a tear and then I'm going to cut it in a little bit of a T. Just a little T, not, not a very big one. There we go. And I'm going 
to give this, grab it like your points like this. I'm going to give it a twist under. See how that just folded under right there? Look at that. And then it finished tearing just how I wanted it right there. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and adjust this just like that. Perfect. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to staple where they stapled, which was right here along this little wood board right here. We're going to cover the old up. Give that a staple right here. Come on. There we go. And now we're going to do this little side the same way, tucking it in, giving it a roll just, just like this until you get it so it's covered. And give that a pull. and I'm going to glue this down as well. But for right now, I'm just putting in my main staples. And like I said, I'm going to have some fabric across here so that will hide that, anything that I don't like. Now, here we have to work between these two staples a little bit. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of the chair first, and I'm going to do around this neck here. So I'll go ahead and do around the neck here first. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to open this up. And we're going to come in here at an angle and we're going to cut our fabric at an angle. Not all the way to the arm. We're going to cut our T. These are not left handed scissors, so that makes it a little bit harder. There we go. And what I teach you, you're going to take and give it all a roll, just like that right there. Okay, well, I don't think I cut in far enough down, so you should be able to roll this. Tuck it in without any loose gaping right here. I you can see that. There should be no loose gaping there. So, that means we're going to have to cut down a little further. Don't cut too far, we won't be able to roll it. Give it another T. There we go. Now let's try this again. Giving it a roll. There we go. Come on, one more roll. Then we'll have it. There we go. And then we give it a roll here on the inside, just like this with a tuck. I have to roll it a little bit more. When we pull it, we should be able to not have any. Okay, so I'm still not in here far enough. Still not far enough in here. Come this way a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Now we should be able to get that roll going here. Sometimes you just gotta work with it. There we go. And we'll give it a pull. There we go. Much better. And by the time I pull that, that will be much, much better, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a staple in this right here. I think that I got it where I want it. And I'll keep twisting and working the material. I keep twisting and working that material until I can pull this nice and tight. Perfect. 
here or a razor blade and I'm going to trim off the excess and then I'm going to glue I'm going to tuck and glue this excess down this is hard to do on a curve so I have to take like little little bits sometimes you just got to come in from a different angle that now I'm gonna come along here we'll finish tucking some of this we'll take um didn't go in all the way did it we don't want that to come loose so I'm gonna put another staple right here there we go and you can take a hammer or something to this as well we got one sticking out there there we go Take shape and I'm going to go ahead and put a staple in right here. Now, I'm not going to work with the front of this just yet. We're going to go ahead and work with this other side and do the same thing. And then we'll uh, do the arms. And I'll go ahead and show you how I'm going to do the arms. I'm going to take the pattern and decide. I'm going to do double again the pattern. Run the pattern the same direction as you do on the chair seat. And you have to decide what you want on that arm. Do you want the reef circle right here? Or do you want an actual pattern to be dead center on there? Or maybe just, so I mean, it has a lot to do with what you want. I think. I think I'm going to stand back and look at it and decide what I think would look good. See if you're still filming. Oh, you are. All right. So I'm really liking just the wreath itself. I think this really lets the pink shine through and not so much of that black. And it has a little bit of something here and here. So I like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna focus on just the circle wreath being on the center of the arms. And again, I'm going to double the fabric for that as well. So I can show you how I'm gonna do that here real quick. plenty of room to play around with. Alright. Works for me and I'm going to have to cut out another one just like it. There you go. Alright. 
right, so that's all the fabric that I need. Now I can either buy pre-made trim or I can buy some pre-made bendable wood moldings. It would be really pretty across here. Again, I am going to put some glue on top of all the nails. I'll glue all this down and I'll finish tucking and gluing. However, the corners will end up working out. I may have to have like one pleat. And then when I pleat a corner, I'll pleat like this. I'll bring that inside to the inside like this. And I'll pleat a corner like that right there. And I'll do that on both corners to match. It gives it a nice skirted pleat. So anyway, that's our chair so far. We'll be back when we get done. I'll do this side next. You can even make uh, take some just some clothesline roping and wrap some clothesline roping with this on your sewing machine, and then attach the and attach that. So I mean, um, fringes, you name it. The sky is the limit on how you paint this. And uh, and again, I do suggest the chalk paint, especially if you're going to shabby cheek this. And you can even take a, after you sand it, you can even hit a little bit of gold paint on this and just hit a little bit of shiny silver or gold paint. That would really be pretty on this as well. So I think my daughter's going to be happily surprised with her gift. What do you think? You think she's going to like this? I think she's going to love it. I really do. Alright, so again, I make the cut. Cut this way. Cut that way. Perfect. I gotta give it a roll. Okay, we're back. You can see I got a couple of projects going. I'm getting ready to add a front porch and a big line eye onto the back of my daughter's house. Oh, that's it. Now here is her chair. This beautiful Louis the Fourteenth chair that we refinished. I got the finished coat on here. Everything looks great. She chose her fabric and I got it cheaper on eBay. I paid about uh, five dollars a yard less for it on eBay. I've um, just went ahead and uh, took off the one layer of cushions, brought it down to the original layer. It was all glued on so I thought that would give it some extra cushion since the fabric she chose wasn't really sturdy. All right, so what we've done here is, as you can see, where I lined her fabric and her pattern up down here with the center. And I did the same thing here on the arms of the chair. Sorry, they're building another one right there. See? <laughs> and um, it just has this beautiful balloon design. And you can see where we just gave it some nice looking wear off this chalk paint. Now here we kept the fabric on here and I covered it with a double layer. I covered everything with a double layer of fabric. And you can see here I pleated the front here and I pleated the front here and I gave that the same look here to make that curve. Um, I have to glue this area down right here because you can't staple this. But I came on around here and I did the same thing here across the back. This is just all stapled and then I came across here and I cut the fabric off pretty close. And you can see here where I stapled down into here back into the creases here and all along the bottom. Right here you can see I've just got the floor to lee and everything aimed in the same direction here. You could turn around the other way if you wanted to. This was just the pattern that matched her chair here. This was actually the direction she wanted her pattern to go. So we faced all the pattern, if it's patterned, in the center, brought it forward, just like we did Jasmine's kitchen uh, dining at chairs that we refurbished. All right, now, now we're ready. And here's that table that I refurbished. Isn't that beautiful? We're getting ready to deliver it to my daughter. This is the one that has those really beautiful swan feet coming up them sexy legs. Isn't that beautiful? And the finish on that is just totally satiny and beautiful. I just love coming by here and just touching this. Now we chose a half inch fabric here and this right here is what we're going to go with. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to cover it up right here with 
with this right here. Now be sure and take a razor blade or something and cut this fabric back enough and put glue up underneath here. Then you're going to want to glue this on just like that right there so that the staples and the edge of the fabric doesn't show. Okay? And you're going to pick an inconspicuous spot. This right here, they burned it with a, with a lighter so they could melt it. That tells me it has nylon in it, more nylon than cotton. And uh, you can do the same. That keeps it from unraveling when you're, in, when you're storing it. Now we'll have to cut this back a little bit more. Glue it down. You're going to want to start in an inconspicuous spot. Again, I'll cut, I'll cut off that little melted spot there, that burn spot. And then we'll bring it on down and around. And that will be just beautiful. And then when we end it, it'll end it here on that inside corner. And I like this braiding because even one-handed, you can see I can get that to bend really nicely. All right, so we're gonna cut this fabric back just a little bit more with the razor blade. And we're gonna go ahead and start gluing and we're just gonna use the glue gun. All right, we're gonna glue all this down. It's gonna take probably about six sticks of glue or more, but we'll get this done. And this will be ready when this dries. This will be ready for my daughter. Be sure and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure and subscribe and let us know down below if we're bringing you the type of content that you want to see or if there's something else you'd like to see more of. We'll be right back when I get done gluing this chair. It's going to take me a few minutes. I still have to trim the rest of that uh, edge of the fabric off. 